In this video, we're going to talk about something called determinants, which from our perspective is going to be this algebraic tool that's going to give us information quite a bit faster than some of our old methodologies. Remember back when we were talking about inverses of matrices and we saw that in the 2x2 two two case, we had this really nice formula for it, that for a 2x2 two two matrix, you could go and do this particular formula and you further got the fact that A was invertible if and only if the denominator, this 1 over AD minus BC, was going to be non-zero. So what's nice about this is that you have a quick condition that is equivalent to invertibility. It is going to be invertible precisely if this thing on the bottom here is non-zero. In other words, you don't get a division by zero problem. I had mentioned quickly at the time that that thing was referred to as the determinant, but let's go and state it precisely now, namely that the determinant, which we typically abbreviated just being debt, of the two by two generic matrix A, B, C, D is going to be equal to A, D minus B, C. And then our condition could be rewritten as A is invertible if and only if the determinant of A is going to be non-zero. Now, the question is, is this a sort of weird artifact of the 2x2 two two case, or does it generalize to the n by n case? And it turns out that yes, it does indeed generalize. That is, we're going to be computing this determinant, we'll figure out how to do that in this video, and then we'll get that A is invertible precisely if the determinant is non-zero. Now before I get to the formula, I'm going to introduce a little bit of notation that we're going to need along the way. The first of which is something called AIJ. Now this is a matrix, as denoted by the capital letter A, and it is effectively the matrix A, whatever you started with, where you delete the ith row and you delete the jth column. So, for instance, if I take as an example, and I've got some matrix A, which is going to be, how about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, then if I want to look at, say, how about A, 1, 2, then what I'm doing here in this A, 1, 2 is deleting the first row and the second column. So I'm getting rid of this row entirely, and I'm getting rid of that column entirely. And so what I'm just going to be left with then is the matrix 4, 7, 6, 9. So this is just sort of a quick way to be able to identify these sub-matrices. The next thing I want to show you is a pattern of minus 1 that's going to be useful to us. I'm going to use the notation minus 1 to the i plus j, where i is my index variable for the rows, so it's an integer between 1 and m, and j is the index before the column, so it runs between 1 and n. Now, I'm going to give a pictorial representation of this in the 3x3 three three case as well. If I think about this first location I have here, that is the i equal to 1 and j equal to 1. So it's minus 1 to the 1 plus 1, which is going to be minus 1 squared, or just 1. If I then look in the next location here, okay, so this is the first row, second column, so 1 plus 2 is 3, and minus 1 cubed, that's just going to be equal to minus 1. And then finally, first row, third column, now I'm up to an even power of minus 1, so I'm up to 1. And this process is going to continue, I'll fill it in. You'll notice that we get this sort of nice alternating pattern of the 1s and the minus 1s. If you choose any value of it, then either any place to the left and to the right or the top and the bottom has the opposite sign of it. Okay, so these are two little pieces of notation. Now let's try to see how we can compute the determinant. I'm going to write down initially a super messy formula. And we almost want to try to move past the super messy formula as fast as we can so we can just visually see how we're supposed to do this computation. But I'm going to write it down for our reference anyways. Egads, that's a big, long, messy formula. But I want to try to break it down in a way that will hopefully make a little bit more sense. The first thing I want you to note is that in front of every single term, there's one of these AIJ notation things. Remember that AIJ referred to the entry of the matrix in the ith row 
and the jth column. And note that the row location, the first component of every one of these terms here, is a 1. So what we're saying is that we're only looking at these entries in this first row, but what we're doing is we're starting at A11, then we're going to A12, A13, all the way down to A1n. So that's the first component to pay attention to. The second component to pay attention to is all of the minus ones up to some power. That was that notation that we just saw a moment ago. So in other words, as we're going along with our AIJs, we're always in that first row and we're going along, we're picking up the alternating plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus pattern that we had previously seen. So we're getting those coefficients of the first row, and then they're multiplying with pluses or minuses according to that nice little pattern. And then the final component that we have in all three of them is this determinant of these submatrices. And the idea here is this. We define what the determinant of a 2 by 2 was. So if I'm in the 3 by 3 case, then what I have when I take a submatrix is it's 2 by 2 and I can write down as determinant. If I'm in a larger dimensional case, well, I have to do this sort of step by step. That from two dimensional determinants, I get three dimensional ones. And then from the three dimensional ones, I'll get four dimensional and all the way up. So indeed, each of these individual determinants for large ends could themselves be a very large formula, just like what we have seen. All right, so, so let's see if we can compute this out for a specific example, and we'll start to get a quick sense of the pattern of how this works. So let's take the determinant of the matrix 1, 0, 2, 0, 1, 3, 1, minus 1, 1. I just made up some numbers here. All right, first thing. I'm going along on my top row. And the first thing I'm going to write down is the A11 component, which is a 1, and it's that one that's hanging out right there. That's my A11. Then it's minus 1 to the power of 1 plus 1, so minus 1 squared, so I don't do anything, right? I don't pick up a minus sign. If I was look back to the original, there's no minus sign there, so I don't pick it up. So now I have to deal with the determinant part. And what A11 is, is a thing that gets rid of the first row and the first column. And that just leaves me with that matrix there, which is a 2 by 2 matrix, and I can compute that matrix's determinant. It is going to be this. AD minus BC, so 1 times 1 is 1, minus 3 times minus 1, which is a minus 1, but because of the extra minus, is going to become a plus 1. All right, next story. I'm going to be taking my A12 that I have right here. Well, A12 is equal to 0. So I don't have to worry about anything else. I know that there is this minus 1 here, but it's going to be minus 1 times 0, so I'm not even going to bother with that one. And then next one, I'm going to be looking at the A13 location. That's this location right there. So I'm going to pick up a 2. I'm going to pick up a minus 1 to the power of 1 plus 3, so it's an even, so I don't get any more minus 1s. So we see if I look at my pattern here, it's a 1 over there. But now if I want to talk about the determinant, the determinant that I'm going to be doing is getting rid of the first row, and the third column. That's what I'm going to pick up over here. And so that leaves me with this submatrix right there. So I'm going to go and compute the determinant of that submatrix. And it is this. It is 0 times minus 1 when I go down along the main diagonal. And so that's going to be a 0. And then I'm going to subtract off the 1 times 1. So I'm going to be subtracting off a minus 1. And what I'm getting out of this looks to be like a 4 minus a 2 is equal to a 2. And there's my answer. Now, in this particular example, we've gotten a non-zero determinant. And therefore, my original matrix A was going to be invertible.